What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop, and you know what doesn't really get talked about enough? Johto. Okay, maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but still, even with as much as Johto has been talked about over the years, being the home to one of the most popular and best Pokemon games of all time, I am willing to bet that there are still some things out there that you don't know about it, and I'm sure you know where we're going with this. A few weeks ago, I covered some facts about the Kanto region that you might not have known, and I really had a lot of fun with that, and it seemed like you guys really enjoyed it as well, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing for Johto, and hopefully the rest of the regions as well. With Johto being as publicized as it is, it definitely was a bit of a challenge to come up with a list of 10 things that most people might not know, but after some digging around, I have came up with a pretty good solid list, if I do say so myself, of 10 facts that you don't know about the Johto region, so why don't we go ahead and just check them out. Now this first one, ironically enough, is probably the fact that is known by the most people overall because it is also the one that was uncovered the most recently. It was actually revealed last summer in the Gold and Silver Beta demo leak that beta versions of Cantilave City as well as Snowpoint City were originally planned to feature in the Johto region instead of in Sinnoh like they ended up being featured. This of course was due to the fact that Gold and Silver were originally going to be the last games in the series and so as such, Game Freak wanted to make the Johto region the biggest that they possibly could, and this resulted in the original plan for Johto being based on the entirety of Japan outside of the Kanto region where of course Kanto is based. And this ended up resulting in Cantilave City as well as Snowpoint City featuring in the original idea for the Johto region, or rather beta prototype versions of them, because if you take a look at these two cities side by side with their beta counterparts, there is no denying whatsoever that these two beta cities were at least the inspiration, if not a full-on prototype version, for what we ultimately saw in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. And since this original Johto region was meant to encompass the entirety of Japan outside of Kanto, it's also worth noting that the prototype Snowpoint City is in the northernmost position on the map, which is where Hokkaido is in real life Japan, which also just so happens to be the basis for the Sinnoh region where Snowpoint City ultimately debuted in. Speaking of cities in Johto, among the settlements that actually can call themselves cities in the Johto region, Cherry Grove City is the smallest of them all. However, this is actually really ironic considering that Cherry Grove City is based on Nagoya, Japan, which is actually the fourth largest city in Japan and the second largest city in the Kansai region, which Johto is based on. One of the most significant cities in all of Johto is Ekrutik City, as it serves as the cultural hub for the entirety of the region. However, during the development of Gold and Silver, it actually went through a number of different changes. Because as early as 1997, details from Pokemon Gold and Silver were being publicized, and in Game Freak's official fan book of Pocket Monsters, one of the things about Gold and Silver that was publicized was a new city, ironically titled Old City. And this city bears a strong striking resemblance to that of Ecrutique, likely meaning that this was a prototype version of Ecrutique City. Moving on from there, there is also an unused house in Olivine City that actually is in the final version of the game that features an NPC that claims a pharmacist in Ecrutique City made some medicine for her Pokemon. In the final game, as we know, the pharmacy is located in Seanwood City, which likely means that the pharmacy was likely originally intended for Ecrutique. On top of that is also likely that the Magnet Train was originally intended for Ecrutique City as well, due to the fact that there are some unused maps in Pokemon Gold and Silver that hint at this possibility. The reason why this could have actually legitimately been considered as well is because the fact that Kyoto, the city that Ecrutique City is based on, is actually a stop for the real world Takedo Shinkansen Train, which is actually the inspiration for the Magnet Train. Speaking of what could have been for the cities of Johto, there is actually a leftover map in the data of Gold and Silver for the Lake of Rage that actually shows it containing a Pokemon Center, a Pokemon Mart, and even a Pokemon Gym. Given the Lake of Rage's proximity to Mahogany Town, and given the general small size of Mahogany Town itself, this could be a hint at the possibility that originally the Lake of Rage and Mahogany Town were combined together into one area instead of being two separate areas side by side side. 
A cool fact about the Johto region that could very easily slip right under your nose if you're not paying very close attention is that each of the Johto gym leaders, minus one small exception, actually have a type advantage against the next gym leader in the order. So for example, Faulkner's flying type is strong against Bugsy's bug type, whereas Bugsy is the lone exception where his bug type is actually neutral against Whitney's normal type. But then the trend picks up and keeps going as Whitney's normal type type is immune to Morty's ghost type, Morty's ghost type is immune to Chuck's fighting type, Chuck's fighting type is strong against Jasmine's steel type, Jasmine's steel type is strong against Price's ice type, and Price's ice type is strong against Claire's dragon type. This also continues into the Elite Four as well, where every member has a type advantage against the next Elite Four member. So for example, Will's psychic type is strong against Koga's poison type, Koga's poison type is resistant to Bruno's fighting type, Bruno's fighting type is strong against Karen's dark type, and it loops back around where Karen's dark type is strong against Will's psychic type. This is actually even more interesting when you consider that we actually talked about in the previous video in this series about Kanto that Kanto has the opposite trend where every gym leader and elite 4 member is weaker against the next member in the line as opposed to stronger like Johto. An interesting fact about the Whirl Islands, aside from the fact that they are the home to Lugia, is that the whirlpools of the Whirl Islands are actually based on the real-world Naruto whirlpools from the Naruto Strait. I can already hear the fanfiction being made right now. Anyway, the islands of the Whirl Islands themselves are also based on Awaji Island, which also sit right next to the Naruto whirlpools in real-life Japan. A rather brief but very interesting fact is that during the development of Super Smash Bros. Melee, Masahiro Sakurai actually had plans for a Sprout Tower stage, which of course originates from Johto, but this was apparently scrapped very early in development. Next up we have what I personally believe is the most interesting fact from this entire video, and of course it has to do with none other than Whitney. Whitney, of course, is one of the most infamous characters in all of Pokemon, and definitely the Johto region, for being a very difficult gym leader thanks to her notorious Miltank. However, one thing about Whitney that can very easily be overlooked is that she actually has an affinity with softball and baseball. This is very seldom even mentioned at all, in fact the only time it ever is really mentioned in game is by an NPC at the Pokemon World Tournament. And you can very easily miss it just by looking at her as well, because even though she actually does wear a baseball jersey and long socks, it's not really obvious right off the bat and can kind of just be seen as casual clothing, even though that is the case and we can also see her with a baseball glove in a early piece of gold and silver artwork. It gets even more interesting though when you consider that baseball Ball is an American pastime, and this actually makes Whitney the second, third gym leader in a row after Lieutenant Surge to have some kind of connection to America. Finally, and most interestingly of all, although it cannot be confirmed legitimately, a possible origin for Whitney's name could come from this baseball background, because there was once a player who played for the Philadelphia Phillies and Boston Braves during the 1930s named, get this, Pinky Whitney, which starkly connects to Whitney not only by name, but also by the pink color scheme of not only her character, but her gym as well. Now, you all might know Johto as the name of the region that was featured in Pokemon Gold and Silver and the second region introduced into the Pokemon world overall, but what if I told you that there's another thing that has to do with Pokemon that also has the name Johto? And well, what if I told you that that particular thing was actually the name of a pop group? Yes, believe it or not, there was actually a Pokemon-themed pop group, which is essentially the equivalent to a boy band just with boys and girls, that actually went by the name of Johto. And these guys are actually the masterminds behind a bunch of different songs that featured in the Pokemon anime, including the classic Pokemon Johto. However, even though these guys are legends and they put out some absolute bops that will absolutely stand the test of time forever and all eternity, their group didn't last very long because after they recorded their album Totally Pokemon, they planned a promotional tour, but the tour got cancelled after the album itself didn't really sell that well on its own. Which is really actually pretty sad because as I said, they put out some absolute bops including the Pokemon Johto Journeys theme song. So here is two 
to the Johto Music Group. May we never ever forget you, and may we always play your songs until the end of time. And last but not least, we actually have a very interesting rumor slash mistake that actually was publicized in an official guidebook for Pokemon Gold and Silver. In one of the original guidebooks for Pokemon Gold and Silver, there is actually a mention of a quote-unquote question mark Pokemon that actually appears in Mount Silver near one of the waterfalls at midnight or very, very early in the morning. This, of course, as you can imagine, in the early 2000s sparked a ton of rumors, but ultimately this was a mistake and there was no question mark Pokemon. The guide also mentioned that this Pokemon was supposed to kind of take the place of legendary Pokemon that were found in the Generation 1 games that did not appear in Gold and Silver, which kind of broke down this rumor considering that all of those Pokemon were programmed into the games and tradable from Generation 1 anyway. And there we have it, everybody. Those were 10 facts about the Johto region that you probably didn't know. Now, I even have to admit myself that Johto is my favorite region. I've played through the games it features in, and I've researched it a bunch, and most, if not all of these facts, I didn't even know myself before researching them. So I certainly hope you guys learned some things as well, and I certainly hope you found this video interesting. If you did, be sure to give it a like and let me know down in the comments below which of these facts was your favorite, and if you have another fact about about Johto that we might not know that you'd like to share. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more Pokemon content every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, as well as Let's Play videos every Monday and Friday, and you can also go check out my Spotify as well if you would like to, to check out some Pokemon tunes, and that would greatly support the channel, and I would really appreciate it as well. With all of that being said though, I will be back on Saturday for another video, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be notified as soon as it goes live, and until then, as always, I love you guys and I will smell you guys later.